If I asked you right now, where are your lungs? You'd hopefully point somewhere around here. And you'd be right. But unfortunately, the demands of healthcare require you to be a bit more precise than that. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can accurately locate the lungs in a living patient. To do this, we'll be drawing out the lungs using this illustration, which you can download in the link below. We'll also be counting ribs and intercostal spaces using the sternal angle. If you're not sure how to do that, I'd recommend checking out this video on the bony landmarks of the chest. The lungs are found inside a pair of pleural cavities, but they don't fully occupy those spaces. So before we can draw the lungs, we're going to add those cavities. More specifically, I want to draw the parietal pleura that lines each space. Now the parietal pleura is split into different sections depending on what it's in contact with. Superiorly, we have the cervical pleura, and people are often surprised at where this pleura actually finishes. So I'll put it to you. How far do you think this pleura extends superiorly? If you said C, then I'm afraid you're wrong, because actually that pleura extends around two to three centimeters up above the clavicles. From here, it lines the inside of the rib cage of costal pleura, finishing at the level of the tenth rib on either side. Centrally, we have the mediastinal pleura, and on the right, this heads straight down towards the sixth costal cartilage. However, on the left, we need to accommodate the heart, so if it reaches the fourth costal cartilage, it deviates laterally, then travels around the heart to the sixth costal cartilage. Posteriorly, both membranes continue down to the level of the twelfth rib. Finally, diaphragmatic pleura lines the inferior border of the cavities. Posteriorly, this pleura is almost horizontal, passing between the twelfth rib medially and the tenth rib laterally. Anteriorly, this pleura follows the angle of the costal margin and should ideally intersect with the midclavicular line at the level of the eighth costal cartilage. So, what about the lungs? Superiorly, they'll also extend up above the clavicles. Now, often when I say this, people start jabbing themselves in the neck to see if they can feel their lungs. Look, I'm not here to tell you what you can or can't do, but I can't imagine successfully poking your lung feels great. The main point I'd take from this is that the lungs can be at risk during injuries to or medical procedures of the neck. Heading inferiorly, the lungs follow the borders of the costal and mediastinal membranes pretty closely. However, they stop around two ribs short of reaching the diaphragmatic pleura. So, posteriorly, they pass from the tenth rib medially to the eighth rib laterally. Anteriorly, they cross the midclavicular line at the level of the sixth rib, before following the costal cartilage to meet the mediastinal pleura. This creates a potential space under the lungs and between the ribs and diaphragm, known as the costo diaphragmatic recess. When taking a deep breath, this recess provides extra space for expansion of the lungs. But thanks to gravity, it's also where any fluid in the pleural cavity tends to collect. In particular, fluid will end up at this junction between the chest wall and the diaphragm, the costo phrenic angle. Now, each of these lungs isn't a single block of tissue. Instead, they're divided into sections known as lobes. These lobes can function semi-independently, and a problem in one may not impact any of the others. And so, when examining the chest, it's vital to listen to each of them, to not just identify the presence of a problem, but also its location. In order to find the lobes, we need to locate the boundaries that separate them, aka the fissures of the lung. On both sides, an oblique fissure divides the lung into upper and lower lobes. These fissures run from the fourth vertebra posteriorly to the sixth costal cartilage anteriorly. Then on the right only, a horizontal fissure follows the line of the fourth rib, creating a third middle lobe. You can find these landmarks on a patient using the sternal angle. So if you draw an imaginary horizontal line through the angle, T4 should be just above it. And then anteriorly, you can use the angle to count the ribs. But you can also find the oblique fissure by abducting the upper limb above the head. As the limb moves up and the scapula rotates laterally, the medial border ends up in line with the oblique fissure. 
And with that, we've drawn the surface anatomy of the lungs, their individual lobes, and the pleural cavities that house them. Hopefully, you can now place the lungs more accurately within the chest, but if you have any questions or problems, please just get in touch. Otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you soon.